So how do you get somebody light? So I think, you know, earlier I was talking about how Yamaguchi Sensei said no technique should take more effort than the natural weight of your arms resting on somebody. So come up and just rest your arms here, but don't actually put your attention here. I'm still thinking about this being my space. So if he pushed into me, he also hits a wall, okay? And then there's a little in to touch the center. And then your hands, your arms don't do anything. But what if I, the way I've described it to you, see if you can make yourself feel taller. You know, it's like normally we stand like this, you know how dancers go. So drop on top of them and then run the energy up your spine to get taller. And they get lighter with you. Um, I will give you my theory on why this works, which has to do with the human brain is basically a processing device and your senses are the inputs. The brain's job is to take it. It is a receiving organ. It wants to get more info. There's no limit to how much info this brain wants. Okay, So when you touch, the brain comes out and goes, okay, there's the touch. And it's waiting to get information about what you're doing. So you know how hard it is if you start glomming somebody. The moment I pull here, his brain, see him pull back, totally gets how to stop that. Okay? But when you touch and the information is, it was expecting to get isn't there, it goes looking for it. So if I don't go yoinking on him when I touch, but instead just stay very neutral, if something moves back here, he moves with it. And why is he moving with it? Because his brain's still looking for the information. This is my working theory for why this works at all. Because I'm sure as hell not pulling or pushing him. So the energy spiral would be in, in and down. And then when I get light, it'll actually go in, up, and out. So in and down, and then up and out. And under normal circumstances, they will float quite nicely with you. And Sal told me Sensei will do this really quick. He'll be a showman, and he'll do it with one finger, and then he'll line five people up, <laughs> and then he'll float all of them. And it's really cool, but it's not any harder than one person. You know, it's, it really is. You just have to know how to do it. So try one, and make sure you're not holding your arms up. If you drop your arm, was I really resting on him? There needs to be an inflow. So if he dropped his arm, it would fall towards him, but it'll fall. Okay? If, if, if it fell straight down, there wasn't any inflow to his center. So it's on him and in. Now he has a choice. And he probably doesn't want to, at this point, take that arm away because he feels the end. And he knows that if he takes that away, he gets hit, which is another reason why his brain wants to stay connected. Then here, if I want him to come up and out, a little bit of Hara coming in here and up my head. So I'm going to be going, do, 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 do. And when I touch and do that, he usually comes up and gets very light. Okay, give it a try. It's very important to say doop-de-doo -doo in your head. It's a secret Kodama. Hey! I'm going through you. And would you really help somebody who's here? Would you really be capable? Or would you be defending yourself? Okay. So, there's the touch. There's the head. And there's the Yes. Okay. So, this is actually less than the room if you want to know what me. Uh, so that's a little <laughs> <laughs> Because the other doesn't have to wear the tight which is why your brain is Guys, listen, if you lift your hands, his brain knows what's going on. Every time I teach this, you'll get somebody who goes... <laughs> <laughs> and that's exactly what happens, which is he's looking at you going... Is something supposed to happen here? <laughs> is, there, is there supposed to be magic here? 
<laughs> no, it's like when I rest down in here, okay, this down, this heaviness, okay, that doesn't change. What changes is me back here. If I change this, his brain totally gets that. I mean, I touched him and then I stopped touching him. It's like, you know, and that just leaves him behind. So everything, as usual, is happening someplace other than where we're touching. Which is why if I get in here and then I get lighter, not lighter in the sense that I'm not going to go up off my feet, but I stretch, he'll follow that. Hey. Cool, huh? It's easy to move you, you know, if I move you. I would like you to do Okay, so now you're pretty solid. Now you're that hard guy to move. Okay. Here's the in, here's the down, resting on you. And then I'll actually come in underneath that and run it up my shoulder. And boop! In, underneath. Okay, I'll help. Okay, so yes, guys, listen, this thing about the entry, where's the entry here? I'm not, I'm not calling this the entry. Okay? Make me a nice barrier. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Ooh. In, rest on him. And then what I'm going to do is take this heart energy and I'm going to put it inside this. Right now I'm kind of outside. If I push down, I'm saying, don't let me do that. Yeah, look at that. I'm running into it. But I can get inside this other places. Oh, now I'm inside. 
it actually, when you realize that all your power is here, and that I've actually managed to get inside it, your brain starts going, rah <laughs> Then, I go, whoop, and he pops right up off his face. Hey? Okay? Anybody else want to feel it? I would love to have a simple like this. Yeah. Don't put your hands on your shoulders and hold them down. This, this is what Sensei does. He'll like eight people, but it won't make any difference. The only thing I change if there's a hole, I mean, really hold him down. Yeah. yeah. So you're going to help him stay on his base. The only thing I change when I do this now is that when I take this energy, I actually feel like I touch him. I'm going to go with my intent to the guy at the end of the line so that I pick up everybody. So now I'm really streaming to you, although you feel it. And then I'm going to come in here, and then I'm going to go, why don't all of you go up? <laughs> it's really spooky. I mean, it's one of those things where you go, oh, gosh, there's a, oh, so you said you're waiting for that. That's okay. We were late on the uptake. There we go. But it, it, it's, when you first do it, there we go. It's one of those things where I, I have my theory about why it works, which I share. And I know I can do it. But it's still so weird that I feel like giggling when I do it. <laughs> it's like I go, God, that's cool. That's really cool. Yep. But you feel it? It just, yes. who did that? I didn't do that. But why did you follow me? Because the brain craves connection. You know, if you're attacking me, if you want to move me, then you have to, yeah, why don't we do something a little less? Uh, you know, in my face, look at uh, so I wouldn't use a straight arm like that, because if you straight arm me, trying to push me over, I'm going to break your elbow. Just a personal. Okay. So, there we go. He's got to touch, and he's got to feel. And if he feels me bracing here, and he wants to move me, what are you going to do? You're going to have to rotate a little bit so it's not hitting my back foot. Or you're never going to move me. So the so moment he touches me, he's processing. You know this is these judo boys here. What are you constantly doing? Feeling, 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 feeling. That's what you need to move this guy. Okay? The moment we touch, there's a two-way connection here. And it is two ways. And, and if he gets really good, when I opened up this, this is like signing on to the internet. <laughs> the only way you can guarantee that no one can hack your computer is don't connect it to anything. If that computer's sitting on your desk all by itself, no one in the world can hack it. I mean, even the NSA has not figured out how to shoot beams through your roof and read what's on your computer unless you hitch it up to something. So it's the same thing here. If we don't connect, it's really hard for him to do it. What's he going to do? Stand out here and make faces at me? And, okay, at some point, something's got to happen. But the moment he goes to do it to me, he set up a channel back. And so we're each essentially trying to hack the other guy's system. And the guy who's best at it is the guy who wins. So in this case, we're just going to isolate this one. He's not going to try and do anything but be immovable here. So you, you did move me when you took me off your chest. Yeah, I know. It's because you were pushing me. Stay there and be really solid. Okay. And you know what? He needs help being solid. Would you come over here and stand right there and hold his hands? Just hold them up. So there's no doubt that he's, he's not having to work at all to hold me up here. What's really interesting is he now just touched the circuit. You know how in electricity, if somebody's getting electrocuted, they want to run up and try and push them off because all of a sudden you're in it too. So if I'm connected to him and he comes up and touches, he's connected too. And you see, when I rested here, he's now part of holding me up, which means also he's feeling, he's connected, he's feeling this. And so if I float him now, they'll both float. <laughs> Isn't that cool? That's cool. Because he's just part of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. This is why the, the eighth dons can do these demos, and the seven and eight people, and they do it. But they're all, as long as they're all connected. And you'll get people when they do that, like we did. I got you, you're in there really pushing down. 
you'll get the, the weenie who doesn't want to participate. And so what they do is they come up and they put their hands here. But then when the float starts to happen, they go. Well, that is not a, a medium through which a wave can propagate. They I just joined to him when I floated like as though yes. the image came to mind was like we were logs on a tide. Yeah. Like we were yeah. tied, like a raft. It wor it'll work on multiple dimensions. I mean, right. you could float people to, you guys can both be like here, and I can float both of you. Because if I just tap it down and I go in, and then I get light, you're both connected to it. It's not, it's not difficult. You just have to know what you're doing. You know, it's one of those things where I did, it, I did a seminar in Las Vegas once. And then I came back late, and one of the guys from Phoenix came. And so later on, I was in Phoenix doing a seminar, and he came up to me and said, I want a refund for that seminar you did in Las Vegas. I got back to my dojo and nothing worked. <laughs> and I said, well, I'm sorry, but you voided your warranty by using the product not as instructed. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> A little more in your edge, like you're straight or something. Hold her down. Hold her down. So you're getting lots of assistance being strong here. I can sit on that, it wouldn't collapse. But now if I touch, and now I've got people on both sides, so it gets slightly trickier because I have to expand my intention. So I'm going to go out and touch you. Feel it? And now I'm going to make sure that I've connected to you too. Feel that come back to you? Now I'm going to float everybody. <laughs> What's moving me? What's moving me? Actually, I'm just expanding in my space. It's like, a, you know, you watch dancers, they're trained to do this. That's why they have this beautiful posture. So if I'm actually in my, my unstretched state, I look like this. And I can use my intent to stretch. I stretch down and up. Okay? It's also the same way that you can expand this way. You're not adding tension. You're not adding any tension. It's not muscle tension, but I'm giving more structure. The whole, all this stuff, there's two ways you give your body structure. Because otherwise, you're a set of bones all connected with little flexible joints. If I didn't have some level of tension, I'd be a puddle on the floor. Okay, so what, what allows you to do anything? You can tense up your muscles, which is the way most people do it. And Dan Harden would call that stupid power. Doesn't mean you're not powerful, and some guy might probably throw you through a wall doing that, but it's still muscular tension that's doing it. Ike is working the strength of the connective tissue, your ligaments, your tendons, and your fascia. And how you get that structure is you use your mind, your intent. So the intent is the English version. When you're talking about using your intent to connect to these different pieces of your fascial structure and the connective tissue, that's what the old guys meant when they said extend key. You know, and for years everybody said, oh, extend key, and had no clue what they were talking about. And it became almost, it became a joke in the community to the point where people were embarrassed to talk about it. Because everybody knew it was, it was a bunch of guys talking about, oh, yes, extend your key. And then, you know, you'd knock them over and nothing would happen. But, you know, you guys were hit with a lot of these things, eh? You saw them just knocking people three, four feet. It's an arm was completely relaxed. So where's the structure? It's, it's the, your intent, your mind, giving yourself the structure. So in this case, I'm just kind of running the up and down by making sure my tailbone and my head stretch. It's kind of like, you know, I'm in the Marines and the guy says, straighten up, soldier. Not rocket science, you guys all know how to do this. So if I'm resting on him, but then I run some energy up my spine, he feels me getting lighter and he follows it. There he goes. Okay? Try it again. If you want 
If you feel like you had it, get in groups of three and have one person holding the hands, the other person holding the shoulders down, and pop all three of them. Because if you can do one, you can do all three. It's absolutely not any different. So now that you can do this completely useless skill, <laughs> what, what do you actually use this for? Well, it's actually in everything, okay? So let's take this, this guy. He's done his showmanuchi. I got him here. We're going to do it now. Don't leave. We're going to be more of a butthead than it's hard. You need it's really easy. <laughs> oh, now you're hard. So everybody tries to cut this down to bring him around for the Arimi nut. Okay? No problem, but cutting that hand down. Wait a minute, cut me down. You're doing Arimi nut. The moment he cuts down, I can bring that hip in and hit him. He doesn't come around on an Arimi Nagi because you cut this down. Because notice, this hand is now pointed at the floor. I no longer own that space. If he pulls this hip back, he can bring the other hand in to hit me. This hand is why he doesn't turn in. So it doesn't cut down. The moment it cuts down, why would he resist that? Just let it go and let me get clobbered. So, bringing him around, then the next thing everybody does is they try and pull him around. So if you've been smart enough to learn not to cut this down, you're still probably pulling. What I want to do is take this guy who's reluctant to move and get him off his base. So I come up here, and the visualization you can use, treat his head and neck like a can of pop and pour it over your shoulder. And so instead of pulling down, which actually goes into his feet and fights you, take this up and over. <laughs> and you notice if you haven't been stupid enough to cut this down, he runs into this. Boom! So that attendee is there all the time. You never took it away. Remember Popkins said they were talking about hitting him but not withdrawing? So the hit's there again. It's kind of like that. I get in here and the first hit can be the shoulder. Wow! In the old days, they'd bring you to that thing, ring your bell. Second hit would be that one. And oh, he's really easy to throw now. <laughs> so we're going to make the practice more pleasant than that. But we're not going to do all those ringing the bells and smashing the heads. But I want this guy hunkered down. Try and pull him, make sure it's not going for you. And now you get to float it the same way we did before. You touch and you take it into him, and then you let it rise. And he comes right up and falls into this. Now, if he doesn't want to fall off his back corner, he's going to have to make the step. And that's what actually brings him around. I don't bring him around. If he, doesn't, if he wants to plant his feet and I do this, then I get out of the way. I let him fall like a tree there. Yeah, see, now he finally decided to step because he didn't want to fall like a tree. Okay? <laughs> So if you're smart, you make the step earlier than that. Okay? The other thing is you really don't want your face coming down here because then the other enemy is this coming straight up after it does. So since they used to go, whoa, boom. And if you weren't straight and couldn't kick your feet out, your nose got flat. Mm -hmm. So you take the down in your legs as much as possible. And then you move with it. And then you get that beautiful artistic looking you're aiming not gay because I lead him into basically the right. This is the undertow that leads into the wave that breaks over. Okay? But the part everybody gets wrong is they're pulling, pushing, going down. Well, down is where his support is. I want him to go up, and then he's ready to fall down. Give this a try. Yeah, I know. Don't worry, I'm just talking about this 
Guys, I didn't spend a lot of time on how you managed not to be struck by this in the first place. Okay, because that's a slightly more, that's a, a class in itself. I'm assuming that somehow or another you managed to do an Arimi. So spatially, a lot of people, what they do is they avoid this. And this is just the same as Popkin Sensei was talking about with the knife. I'm out here. Just because I escaped, the next thing's coming. Okay, so you really, where I'm starting this exercise is assuming you did a really nice Arimi. And what you'd really like to do is have your front center line at their side center line. Because now I'm controlling the elbow, not the hand. And when I bring this up, I'm not pulling. A lot, if you're out here, you're gonna feel like you're pulling. Here, where's he falling? He's falling straight to me. And this is technically, I'm, I'm really trying to get you guys to feel the float, but technically this is actually going this way. So it's helping with the rotation. So this is heavy and extending out. I know this looks really mellow. Why don't you come hold his hand? Oh, they're both going out now. See, he's going out there. If this is really just gently going out this way as he comes this way. And so look, if I wanted to, thank you, if I wanted to do this even a little more extremely, this is where you get headlocks, chokes, and all sorts of, but that's not the Arimi Nage. So the Arimi Nage <laughs> is a particular technique, and so I don't go quite that far. Just enough, and just enough. I had lots of kids, so I had lots of kids references. My ex and I had eight between us. So, you know, I'm a Shihan and babies. <laughs> right? And when you're doing Aiki, you're trying to do baby bear Aiki. Not too hard, not too soft. It has to be just right. So, ba boom, ba boom. And then, so he's falling into you. And so you get out of the way. That's the Tenkan. And when he falls, he can either fall on the back of his head or he can move that front foot and try and get frontal again. And that leads him into this beautiful throw. This is not me. You know, you ever try to do someone who's uh, less than finesseful, but is maybe powerful? <laughs> yeah. I can do that on some people because I'm 300 pounds. But you'll notice there's a qualitative difference there. You feel like somebody yoinked you and cranked you. I'm not looking for that. I'm looking for the one that goes, what the hell just happened? And what the hell just happened? And, uh, because if I can be that relaxed, if we were fighting, I'm so relaxed and so invested, uninvested in the throw that I can be hitting him multiple times while this is happening. If you're glomming somebody while you're doing that, you can't do anything else. So you might be yanking them around, but you can't be hitting them at the same time. I defy you to yank somebody around and hit them at the same time. You can do one or the other. On the other hand, I could be going... <laughs> Which do you want? You want to, basically, when you're doing your stuff, try and look at it as, I don't want to do anything that restricts my complete freedom to move. And I'm in fact trying to restrict his freedom to move. I am limiting his possibilities, but I don't want to do it in a way that limits mine. So I should be able to get him here and right in the middle of it, walk over here and hit him if that was what was required. I'm not invested, I'm not yoinking on him. Does that make sense? Freedom to move is a really big deal in your martial arts. And in fact, if you're talking about how martial arts applies to your life, this is one of the great lessons, is how not to get stuck. How to be able to walk away from something that needs to be walked away from. 
okay, how not to get over invested in something. You know how many businesses fail because they got started and the guy wouldn't let it go when it showed and then he blows his entire fortune trying to keep something afloat that they knew two years ago was a loss, but he can't let it go. Same kind of stuff. Once you start getting invested in this throw, maybe it's not even the right throw anymore because you're so invested, can't let it go. So, I'm uninvested. It's really light touch. The other thing about a light touch, what does this make you feel like doing? You see him tighten up? You glom somebody, you are creating the UK from hell. You make somebody who might have been willing to move, you make him unwilling to move because you're making it unpleasant for him. I would like, the quality of this touch is just like I'd hug a baby. I don't want him feeling like he should be tightening up. But I actually liked it, like it for it to feel nice for him. Actually, believe it or not, it's that soft. I get in here and I bring this up and I let him fall into this. I haven't done anything nasty to him yet. <laughs> there you go. A little more. Okay.